On the table, a Razer model RZ01-0201 gaming mouse. The problem, press and hold down the left mouse button. The response you get, it thinks you released the button when you haven't. So it's almost guaranteed the switch is bad. Is it worth trying to replace the main switches? Well, let's see how it goes. I expect the most difficult part of this will be getting the mouse apart. There are no screws showing. Kind of looks like a couple of circle impressions under this top slide pad. I really want to remove these pads without tearing them up or deforming them so bad I can't reuse them. The only thing I have I could replace them with is some thin UHMW plastic, but cutting small shapes out of it is a chore. Okay, I have two screws here. I wonder if they tuck some under the bottom pad. I have to say, Razer looks like they used a really good adhesive tape to attach these pads. Good for them not coming loose, but making them very difficult to remove. Doesn't look like it. Guess I shouldn't have jumped the gun on the bottom pad. I'll remove the two screws at the top and see if maybe the bottom clips in. No, still feels like a screw or two left. Oh, under the label, of course. Yeah, they don't intend for this thing to ever be taken apart. Reinstalling the slide pads may be the most difficult part of this repair. Well, let's see what switches are in it. Omron switch. Should be able to get a replacement. Don't like that it says Razor above Omron, but pretty sure they wouldn't run an entire new switch design just for Razor. I don't see the D2FC-FK-50M at a good price, and I don't begin to believe the 50 million actuation number. Looks like the D2FC-F7N is about the same, and can get five of them for $7. Now that's worth a shot. This is the kit I ordered from Amazon. Looks like seven metal self-stick pads to go on the mouse buttons. And five switches. The switches do have Omron stamped on them, so at least they are a brand name. These switches are supposed to be good for 10 million clicks. Yeah, sure. Four screws hold the PC board in place. and one very tiny screw holds the wheel sensor in. The 
The connector for the USB cable comes loose, making it easy to work on the PC board. Before I desolder the switches, I'm going to put some fresh solder on the switch terminals. and a little flux. It just makes desoldering the pins much easier. Now just going to vacuum desolder the switch leads. I apply a little pressure until I feel the solder melt. Then pull up on the gun so there is really no pressure on the PC board pads. I'll wiggle the gun back and forth I feel the lead start to move, then pull the trigger to suck up the sorter. This is where applying the fresh sorter pays off. Without it, parts are a lot more difficult to remove from the PC board. The new switches do appear to be mechanically identical to the old switches. An extra hand would sure be nice for soldering in the new switches. I'll get one pin soldered, then check to make sure the switch is seated properly before soldering the remaining two pins. One of these days I'll get around to making me an automatic sorter feeder and do away with that needing a third hand thing. Oops. The wheel is keyed so it looks like it will only fit two ways. Don't want to force it in place. There are plastic cutouts in the base for the USB cable to fit into. The PC board will hold the cable in place. I do think it's nice that the USB cable is plug-in. You would think they could save a few pennies by eliminating the connector. But that may not be the case if using automated PC board assembly these days.
I am going to put the metal strips on the button post. They do have a small wear spot on them. The little metal pieces are covered in plastic, so if they do come loose, shouldn't short out anything. Since they came in the switch kit, I don't see a good reason not to give them a try. Two cables from the top of the mouse have to be connected. The wires are just long enough to make that pretty easy. The buttons feel real good. Once I get the screws back in, and before I spend all that time putting the pads back on, I'm going to hook it up and make sure it's working correctly. The mouse is working like it should, so now to the tedious and most time consuming part of the repair. Of course the adhesive is stronger than the foam tape, so I have a nice layer of adhesive on both the mouse and the pads. So it's just a matter of scraping off all the old tape layers and then really cleaning the areas good with isopropyl alcohol. I want to make sure and remove all of the residue adhesive. VHB tapes really like a good clean surface to stick to. That's most of it. The alcohol seems to be doing a pretty good job of cleaning off the remaining residue. Might have been a good idea to put a bit on before I started scraping. But anyway, got the mouse and pads clean and ready for the tape. As there always seems to be a complication, I can't find my thin VHB tape. I know I have a small roll of 1 inch wide by I think 20 mils thick, which is just what I need for this. But all I can find is this 3 quarter inch wide by I think it's 45 mils. It's a lot thicker than I would like. It will just have to do for now. The bottom pad is easy, it fits on the tape. For the top pad I will have to put two pieces of tape together. Then just a matter of cutting them out. I really need to sharpen this blade. I think I've told myself that the last couple of times I've used it. Probably won't get done after this use either. Pull the release liner off.
position the pads in place and press them down. Then repeat for the top pad. I did deform the top pad just a little bit, but I think I can live with it a little stretched. I should have been a little more gentle when removing it. I think the mouse is worth the time and money spent on repairing it. It's a nice mouse. And that's it. The mouse is ready for action. Thank you for watching.